Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's been quite some time and I actually wanted to celebrate my return to YouTube with a new Celestial Mechanics video regarding quantum mechanics and materialism. Quantum mechanics is the field of science that many supposed philosophers like William Lane, <coughs> I mean Lane Craig and inspiring philosophy use in order to prove their very personal version of God. I think they do so because they expect their audience to be as ignorant about the field as they are themselves. But not all of us are. In my Celestial Mechanics video I wanted to address inspiring philosophy's claim that quantum mechanics somehow necessitates God. But Martima81 beat me to it. He made quite a good video in which he debunks almost every one of inspiring philosophy's silly ideas. But there are still two issues I have with Martima. First of all he was far too nice and secondly I think he made a mistake. So let's watch the clip where I think the error occurred and then I will give you my ideas on the topic. Let me try to explain this using an analogy. I'll take two dice, one black and one white, and let them represent two entangled particles. I shake them up and without looking I separate them, one in either hand. Now if I look in my right hand and I find the white one there, I know instantly that the black one is in my left hand. This would be true even if the dice were separated by billions of light years. If the one over here is white, I know that the other one is black, and I will know this instantly. Of course, this analogy assumes what I earlier referred to as quantum realism. That is, the dice exist in distinct states independent of observation. One is white, one is black, but which one is which is a hidden variable. If realism, that is, quantum realism, is true, then the principle of locality isn't violated because no information travels between the particles. Finding the white dye is not what turned the other one black. It was black all along. In other words, if quantum realism is true, then there is no need for any spooky action at a distance, so quantum mechanics doesn't violate relativity in that case. So let's start with the definitions. Very simply put, the principle of locality is, when you have an object, this object is only influenced by what is very close to this object. If you have some other object that's very far away, um, these two objects can only communicate with a speed slower than the speed of light, faster than light, or even instantaneous communication is something that's impossible. Okay. Local hidden variables. Um, I think Martimer gave a quite good explanation on these. And again, with his example, you have two dice, you mix them up. One is colored black, one is colored white. Um, you separate them, but you can't look at them. You transport them to the other to to the ends of the universe. You still then know which die is which, but the color is already determined, and the color would be the local hidden variable. It was determined from the beginning. And when you are at the restaurant uh, at the end of the universe, and you look in the box where you put the die, and you find it's black, then you know that on the other end of the universe um, there is a white die, and so the the, the outcome of the measurement just depends on this local hidden variables uh, variable which was determined from the beginning. But that's not the picture of quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics both die would be gray or would be black and white, would be a superposition of black and, of black and white. And if you measured the black and white state at one point you would get either black or either white, 50-50 chance and the other one would just be the opposite. Okay, to illustrate this let me present an experiment. This experiment has been done in order to test whether local hidden variables are sufficient to explain quantum entanglement. Um, in this experiment you have a photon source which can create two entangled photons, you have two polarizers and you have detectors behind the polarizers which will register if a photon goes through or not. So let us assume that the local hidden variable theory uh, is correct. So, um, and the local hidden variable would be the polarization of these photons. So you have a vertically polarized photon and a, a horizontally polarized photon, and these are sent off to the side. If you have two vertical polarizers, the vertical, vertically polarized photon meets the vertical polarizer 
and can pass and is registered. The horizontally polarized photon hits the vertical polarizer, it can't move through and so you you have no registration. So you have always one photon that goes through and the other photon uh, doesn't go through. But that is not what is observed. Um, if you do this experiment with entangled particles, it's that either both particles go through the polarizers or they don't. So you always get either two clicks on the detectors or nothing at all. And this can only be explained if there is some spooky action between these two photons. Now there are some loopholes with this experiment. One loophole is that the polarizers are very close to each other, so information could still be transferred between the two photons. So you could put the polarizers very far apart. And then you could uh, and then it would take an, a, an, a long enough amount of time in order to actually determine whether this happens. And this has been done um, and it was determined that the distance between these uh, polarizers doesn't matter. Another loophole would be that if the setup of the experiment is determined when you send off the photons, then they could compare notes and could decide whether they both go through or whether they don't go through. So that they, have, they could, have, could have sort of known figuratively the setup of the experiment and decide beforehand what the outcome would be. And you could fix this by simply hooking these polarizers to random number generators. Um, maybe you could use quantum random number generators, um, which generate truly random uh, outcomes. And when you send, when you have, when the photons are already flying, you just change the orientation of these polarizers. So, and and you will still get the same result. You will still get this spooky action of the distance. And so I think uh, that, uh, I mean, there are also some other loopholes, but for photons, these loopholes have now all been addressed, and um, you always get the results that local hidden variables are insufficient to explain the outcome of the experiment. Um, so I think uh, that uh, local, local hidden variable theory is untenable, and also that quantum mechanics violates the principle of locality. Well, I hope my hand gestures weren't too confusing and I encourage you to look up these things for yourself and to check what I just said, because I could have made a mistake as well. And Martima, I really appreciate your contribution to rationalism here on YouTube and I hope that you will continue making these great videos. Anyway, thanks for watching.